Hey guys, it's Shay from Skull Gaming Network. Welcome to a Retro Bowl feature. Not truly a Retro Bowl video, but pretty similar to that idea. And today I am bringing you guys the results from the Skull Bowl. What is the Skull Bowl? Well, as many of you know, there's Retro Bowl leagues out there, one of which is the RBCDL. The RBCDL is a Division One FBS focused retro bowl league they have all 130 fps teams they play on medium difficulty they compare point differentials for the whole season and they have bowl games and or playoffs for the top 74 out of 130 teams in this season for the first time they opened up bowl games to taking sponsors from like the community I applied, and I was blessed to be one of the first five bowl game sponsors. Named this bowl game the Skull Bowl, partially after my channel. Game is played at U.S. Bank Stadium. And for the first Skull Bowl, we've got the Missouri Tigers taking on the Indiana Hoosiers. You can see, based on point differential, Indiana's was plus 898. With point bonuses, you get point bonuses for not using swipes, for submitting scores early, and for winning your bowl game the season before. Indiana was taking on the Missouri Tigers at plus 901, and I believe these were the last two teams to get into bowl games. So the structure of the Skull Bowl is as follows. There's the three playoff games. We're going to use the divisional round, the conference championship, and the retro bowl as three individual head-to-head -head matchups. Whichever team wins, the majority of those head-to-head -head matchups wins the Skull Bowl and gets their team name engraved onto the Skull Bowl trophy, which you'll see at the end of this video. It's a Viking horn. It's pretty cool. We're going to load into things in the first game. Indiana. They got 74 to 28 on Houston for a point differential of plus 46. Very strong. Missouri, in their first playoff game, won 68 to 24 for a point differential of plus 44. So by two points, which would be the two failed two point conversions for Missouri, one would have tied it, the other would have given them the win in the first game. The first game, however, does go to Indiana. Now, Missouri sent me player stats for all three games, which is awesome. We're going to feature them. So in this first game, we've got D. Zeiss, must be the son of recently retired Vikings quarterback Travis Zeiss from my RB NFL save. He balled out 520 yards, nine touchdowns. His receivers, Pierce had 226 and five. Stinney had 255 and 3. Looks like he had a check down to his running back for a touchdown, and he had a tight end get maybe one or two catches. In the second game, both teams scored 72 points on offense. Indiana on defense gave up 22 points, get a point differential of plus 50. Missouri only gave up 10 points on offense, so their point differential was 62. So in game two, by a score of 62 to 50, Missouri won. So it's one game apiece. This third game is going to matter. In game two, Zeiss once again balled out 493 and nine touchdowns. This time, both the running back and tight end got one touchdown. Stinney again got three touchdowns with 159 yards. And Peters only got four touchdowns, but he had 279 yards receiving. Defensively, I forgot to look at this the first game, but Wilbur had a pick and Diamond had a sack. Overall, Tell 11 tackles. Honestly, Ragland with three tackles is the only one that looks like they might not have played well defensively. So the third game, we're going to start with Mizzou. A very solid effort, 64 to 26 against the Miami Dolphins. 
I'm guessing this Dolphin team was rated pretty highly. But, you know, plus 38 in the Retro Bowl, the championship game should be against the toughest team. Very, very solid. Looking at the player stats, Zeiss, 5-12 and 7 passing touchdowns, which means that Evans had one receiving and one rushing touchdown. And then Stinney had four touchdowns and 241 yards. Peters, 178 and two touchdowns. Wilbur, absolutely no stats, but the rest of the defense came through with tackles but didn't get any big impact plays, by which I mean interceptions or sacks. There was actually one forced fumble by Ragland that probably saved a potential touchdown in the second half. Meanwhile, Indiana had the game of their life in the Retro Bowl Championship, 80-7 over the New Orleans Saints for a plus 73-point differential. So they win the inaugural Skull Bowl two games to one. Their point differential overall certainly was stronger, but you could have a team someday that wins two to one with a worse point differential. So there we go. Congratulations to the Indiana Hoosiers on winning the first ever Skull Bowl. There is the championship trophy. Again, it is a Viking horn. If we zoom in a bit, you can see it says Skull Bowl Champions. And then you have SB1, that's Skull Bowl 1, Indiana, 2-1. to one. Then we'll continue to engrave it downwards. So hopefully, assuming things go well, we'll have a Skull Bowl 2. We'll have a second champion. And it will either be 2-0 two or 2-1. Two We'll continue the tradition right down the trophy. Once we fill up the front side, we'll flip it over and fill up the other side. Once we run out of space, we might make a second trophy. We might change the trophy. We'll just have to see. But there is the recap again. Indiana wins game one, 46-44. Missouri wins game two, 62-50. And Indiana takes game three, 73-38. So congratulations to Indiana and to Missouri for a great season. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Leave a like if you did. Subscribe if you're new for more Retro Bowl content. If you want to join the RBCDL, do it. Now's the time. The coaching carousel is open. Follow at RBCDL underscore commish on Twitter and DM them saying you want to get in the league. I'll put a link to the Twitter account in the description. But with all of that being said, that's going to do it for now. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. And until next time, and as always, peace out.